This video will teach you how to perform a basic interpretation of a pelvis slash hip x-ray. We will use the ABCS method, which I will explain shortly. I like this method as it includes the important parts and it is easy to remember. Before we start the main assessment, let's go through the preparation steps you should do before you do the main assessment. And first we have to identify that we have the correct patient and we make sure that we have the correct x-ray for the patient's clinical indication. Secondly, we have to see what projections we have and if we have the correct ones. Lastly, we check if the quality of the x-ray is sufficient enough to do a proper examination. So which projections are relevant? We have two main ones, the anterior posterior one and the lateral or frog leg view. The anterior posterior one is the one that you will most often look at. It takes a picture of the whole pelvis from just above the iliac crest to the first one third of the femur. The patient lies down with the legs straight down as shown. And to get a proper picture, it is important that the feet of the patient is rotated slightly inwards, about 15 degrees. The other important modality is the lateral or frog leg view. This one is mostly relevant in pediatric patients to look for epiphysiolysis or developmental dysplasia, for instance. To achieve this image, the patient lies down with the knees flexed outwards and the heels touching each other. There are other modalities as well, but they are not always taken. And to assess the quality of the picture, you have to look at three things. All the structures should be included. You have to ensure that the appropriate anatomy is visible within the borders of the image, usually above the iliac crest to one third down to the femoral shaft. And both trochanters should be included. The resolution should be good enough. And lastly, it should not include excessive parts of the body, taking away from the area of interest. The x-ray to the right, I would say, is bad due to it including too little of what we need for our evaluation. Another thing that might be useful to know is about how to differentiate whether you have a male or a female pelvis. And we have a few points that can help us. First, the pubic arch in males has a much more narrow angle, while in females, it's wider. Secondly, the female pelvic inlet appears more round and wider, while the male one is more oval and narrow. Lastly, the iliac crest is wider and it appears less flared in females compared to males. Now let's get down to the main part, and that is how to evaluate the x-ray. We will focus on the ABCS method, though there are other methods that work just as well. The only important thing is that you get to check everything you need to do. The ABCS method can also be used similarly for other skeleton x-rays. ABCS stands for A for alignment, B for bones, C for cartilage, and S for soft tissue. We start with alignment. First, check if each side of the pubic symphysis is lying parallel to each other and that it is located approximately in the midline of the image. A misaligned pubic symphysis can look like this and this is a very serious sign. When the pubic symphysis is disrupted, there may be an underlying bleeding accumulating and the pelvis can accumulate a lot of blood. This can quickly lead to circulatory shock. Secondly, check that the pubic ring is symmetrical and located in the middle of the image. In this case, for example, the pubic ring is quite uneven and it is a result of a traumatic fracture. There is also bone which comes from the dislocated fracture of the iliac crest, which can be visualized inside the pelvic ring. Third, check that both femurs are located in the correct position in their respective joints. In this example, you should see that the left femur is being dislocated out of the joint. A very common case, especially in older people and younger individuals with hip joint dysplasia. And now to B for bones, the most obvious part of a skeleton x-ray. Here you start by tracing the cortical outline of the bones to look for any breakage in this line. You start with the one femur and you trace the cortex all the way around it. Keep following that cortex. 
Then you do the other femur. Afterwards, trace the pelvic ring for any breakage of the cortical line. Then you do the obturator rings. And lastly, trace the hole outside of the pelvis itself. There's a really important radiological sign to look for in the pelvis x-ray. And this is called the Shenton's line. This line runs along the medial edge of the femoral neck and the inferior edge of the superior pubic ramus. You can see how this line runs continuously without interruption. If the Shenton's line is compromised, it is highly suggestive of a femoral neck fracture. But note that a broken Shenton's line doesn't always mean that there is a fracture, and also an unbroken line does not rule out a fracture. It is just a very important sign to know of. Pause the video now and take some time if you can see if you can trace the Shenton's line. Is the Shenton line in this case broken or is it intact? In this case, we can't run the line continuously and this is a result of a femoral neck fracture. Let's do another quick practice x-ray. Trace the cortical outline and try to identify the fracture in this case. In this x-ray, we can see that if we visualize the cortical outline, it is broken at multiple places. This poor woman suffered from a traumatic fracture of her superior and inferior pubic rami. It should also be noted that the, this x-ray is suboptimal as it is not straight on the pelvis and we can't see the top of the iliac crest. But this is how it will be in practice sometimes. You won't always get a perfect image. Let's do one more test. Pause and try to identify the fracture in this case. In this x-ray, we can see a broken Shenton's line as a result of a femoral neck fracture. Now to the next part, C for cartilage. Cartilage is actually not visible on x-rays, but what we can see is joint spaces where the cartilage is supposed to be. So what we actually look at at the C point is the joint space. The first joint space I look at is the pubic symphysis and specifically the space between the bones. This space will get increasingly smaller physiologically over time. At the age of 20, it should be approximately six millimeters, while at the age of 50, it's approximately three millimeters. A condition that you should know of is what's known as pubic symphysis diastasis. This is a separation of the pubic symphysis, but this is not because of a fracture. If this space is over 10 millimeters in adults, then it is considered diagnostic. Childbirth is the most common cause, though it is still rare during childbirths. During labor, the pubic symphysis will physiologically dilate about three to five millimeters to allow for the birth to take place. And this will, in normal cases, return to the normal space within a few months. But in some cases, however, the dilatation is larger and it might even persist. Another very common condition seen on hip x-rays is osteoarthritis or osteoarthrosis. It's the same thing, just different names. It is very important that you can evaluate these changes. Let's compare a case of arthrosis to a normal pelvic x-ray for easier evaluation. Number one, in osteoarthritis, the space between the bones in the joint is reduced. The amount of space reduced is variable throughout the joint. Secondly, we can have subchondral sclerosis, which is the thickening of the bone surface in the joint. You can see this as a more white, or in radiological words, hyperdense area. Compare the normal and the abnormal case here, and you should clearly see how much more white the arthrosis joint is. Third, osteophytes. Osteophytes are small bony projections that have formed near the joint margin. Another classical sign of arthrosis. The last sign 
uh, is less commonly present and therefore the least important, but you should still know of it. I believe we have what is known as a subchondral cyst here in this arthrosis case, as indicated by the blue arrow. The last point, S, stands for soft tissue. The main thing you will do here is to notice any swellings, effusions. Remember, effusion is just accumulation of fluid. You should also notice foreign bodies or calcifications. Here we have a case of a foreign body, which is uh, a hip joint replacement. Let's do a quick recap of some of the more important points before we end this video. Before you perform the main evaluation, remember to do the preparation, which includes checking that we have the correct patient and the correct x-ray we wanted. The projection should be correct and the quality should be sufficient. If you have any previous x-rays from the same patient, use those ones to compare with the new ones. Remember that x-rays are not always very sensitive or specific, so a diagnosis cannot always be confirmed or disconfirmed based on x-rays alone. In A for alignment, we check the alignment of the bones in respect to each other. In B for bones, we trace the cortical outline of all the bones and we look for any breakage in the cortex. This can indicate a fracture. In C for cartilage, we evaluate the joint space for any pathologies. The most common pathology to know of is how to see osteoarthritis. And in S for soft tissue, inspect the tissue around the skeleton for any swellings, effusions, foreign bodies, or calcifications. And lastly, there are more to pelvic x-rays than what I have presented here. This video is made for young clinicians to teach the most important aspects. And I hope it has been educational. Cheers.